From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Andrea Lutz. This afternoon, authorities in Toole County continue to search for two missing Missoula men believed to have fallen through the ice of the Marias River. The sheriff's office received a call surrounding the overdue fishermen after an extensive search of the area, though authorities have tracked the men from a campsite onto the ice. Search crews also found items floating in the water. Two Bear Air out of Kalispell helped in the search efforts using an underwater camera. However, the effort was unsuccessful due to some harsh weather conditions. We'll, of course, keep you updated on this story. In Mineral County, a second child has died from injuries after a weekend shooting in St. Regis, where it appears his father shot his two sons and himself. The boy would have turned five years old today. Authorities believe Anthony Dasher shot the boy and his seven-year-old brother Saturday evening before turning the gun on himself. The younger child was life lighted to Spokane, where he died Tuesday morning. The Mineral County Sheriff says the Department of Criminal Investigations will make a final determination as to what happened. Happening now, oral arguments and opening arguments have begun in the Donald Trump second impeachment trial. It comes after an emotional day of senators watching back video of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. The Senate ultimately voted to move forward with the case. The defense, though, saying the trial is unconstitutional since Trump is no longer president. More never before seen video is expected today. That trial is to last at least into next week. Well, Montana's two U.S. Senators are weighing in on the hearing. Republican Steve Dayton says that he's already made up his mind that Trump did not incite the riot. Democrat John Tester believes Trump needs to be held accountable for his actions. He believes the vote will be close if people keep an open mind. Trump is not the president. He is a private citizen and the chief justice is not presiding. I think pursuing this impeachment trial would set a dangerous precedent as it relates to private citizens. And the question is, when does this stop? That's typically what Senator Daines has done from the beginning. Uh, he's covered for this president, and he was one of the 13 people that uh, spread the lie about the election being stolen until the rioters overran the United States Senate chamber. New at noon, Governor Greg Gianforte will hold his first bill signing ceremony today at the Montana State Capitol. He plans to sign Senate Bill 65. This is the bill that would protect businesses, health care providers, nonprofits, and churches from lawsuits if they make a good effort to protect inv individuals from the spread of COVID-19. The signing will take place at 2.30 in the governor's reception room. Anaconda schools are thawing out after a heat outage that left students and staff scrambling in this sub-zero winter wave. Well, the heat went out Monday. It has since been restored. Maintenance was made aware of that situation, but also realized that it was at a point where it could not be fixed in time for school starting. So an area heating company had to be called out to help. The school district says the heat was restored within about a couple of hours. In the meantime, though, students, of course, had to bundle up. Seems like we're all still bundling up out there, Miller. It's still cold. It is brutal. And, you know, we've got that cold Arctic air, the polar vortex up north in Canada, just digging in deep that cold air. As we take a look at those temperatures out there right now, let's make our way down the map along the high line. We've got minus 17 in Cutbank, 18 below in Haver, uh, 12 below in Great Falls, uh, minus 17 in Lewistown, in Billings, we're at minus four. You factor in the wind chills, folks, it is brutal out there. We have got a full list of your warnings and advisories coming up and how long they'll last, and do we have a warm-up finally on the horizon? I'll let you know the main forecast coming up here in just a bit. Andrew. Missoula's Pavarello Center has adjusted its policies to get as many people through the doors as possible. Officials say that main location on Broadway is at capacity, though, with 88 residents. But the new Johnson Street Winter Shelter is serving as many as 100 people most nights. That location's capacity is 150. The POB believes that it can meet the needs of the community through this Arctic blast. Uh, complaints persist in Gallatin County surrounding the administering of COVID-19 vaccines, although officials say they're trying to make the process as easy as possible. It's been several weeks since vaccinations began for Phase 1B, and residents say the current system still has problems because the sign-up software makes it lengthy for seniors. They say by the time they complete it, the slots are already filled. 
Gallatin County says they are aware of the issues. And meanwhile, in Flathead County, health officials received an extra 1,000 vaccines ahead of a vaccine clinic at the fairgrounds. The appointments are only for individuals in 1B's phase. Hospital officials will call residents based on the current placement of the COVID-19 vaccine wait list to schedule those appointments, and you can call and get on that list. New data surrounding the impact of COVID-19 and what it's had on Great Falls students is showing that student learning remotely or students learning remotely are not quite hitting the target. The study says elementary students are not on track to score high on standardized testing. And the report also says 20% of high schoolers are now classified as credit deficient. As a result, school officials implemented several credit recovery options midway through the school year, but it's not just remote learners who are struggling. And I just think what we're seeing here is a deep scar from missing school for three months, and in some cases for a year and three months. And officials are already working on ways to remedy the situation, including extending school year programs and surveying students and parents. New at noon, Montana leaders are launching a snowbird fund that would move financial support to Native American families who are missing a loved one. Activists say it fills a hole currently not being met by the government. Families can use the grants to help fund costs associated with searches, such as gas money, meals, and buying drones. Whitney Williams, who previously ran for governor, helped launch the fund, and hearing the stories of families conducting their own searches without the help of law enforcement prompted her to do something. And what we realized was that across the state, the needs were very similar. Um, People just needed a little bit of support uh, financially because, you know, here we have uh, communities, many of whom are already um, in poverty or extreme poverty, having to foot the bill for uh, for these searches. So she also says the fund won't solve the issue of missing and murdered indigenous people in the state, but hopes it will prompt neighbors to help their neighbors. We do have more news ahead on the new news today, including how COVID is keeping construction material supplies low and demand high. We're diving into how a Montana group is trying to help. But first, Miller Robson back in with a look at that statewide weather forecast.